Right, I'm going, I'm going to continue my lecture on the uh, what are the disinfectant methods being used, okay, to disinfect water. Right, the first one is the heat. This one is the most effective method, okay? But it only is suitable for a small scale. That's why at home, okay, well, those, we, do, we do have treated water, we tend to boil our water and certainly by boiling the water, okay, we'll kill all the bacteria, the pathogen, microorganism and things, things, like, uh, things like that in water. Okay, so that is the most effective, but definitely uh, it's not suitable to use for a bigger size of water treatment plant. And um, is there anything that I should say? Oh, and then another uh, disadvantage of heat, there is no residual effect. You remember that I told you about uh, we need to have some residual uh, of uh, disinfectant in the water system. So certainly it's not possible for us to heat up all, all along the pipe okay? uh, during distributions uh, of water. Okay? So that's not possible. So that is the first uh, method, which is heat. The second one is ozone. Ozone is very effective actually uh, in um, disinfecting Water. It has been applied since 1906. Um, it's actually more effective than chlorine. But again, if you are applying ozone in the water, uh, there won't be any residual effect. Because ozone, if you look uh, at the shape of ozone, it's like a triangle, okay? Like a triangle like this. Okay? Oxygen, 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 okay? So three oxygens. So that is our ozone. It is a very strain uh, compound, if you like. Okay, very strain compounds. So this uh, compound, they, they don't really like to be in this form, and that's why they are they are so reactive because they want to break one of the one of the bond uh, to form normal oxygens. Okay, so so if you merge uh, the ozone inside our water. Certainly, we cannot expect that the ozone will be kept in the water freely. That would happen because they are very reactive. They like to uh, to change uh, their form into oxygens. Okay, and it also is very high cost. Producing ozone is not cheap. Right. So ultraviolet radiation. So that is another a good method. Okay, it's very effective actually. So basically, what you have, what you have to do is just to uh, bombard the water with ultraviolet radiations. Okay, let's say you have a bottle of water, so we want to kill all the bacteria inside there. Just bombard it with uh, ultraviolet radiation. It can kill very effectively all the bacteria. Okay, but then it cannot be applied with the water that have high turbidity. Okay. So when we talk about high turbidity, it means that it has so much uh, suspended solid inside the water. Because of that, okay, so whatever uh, ultraviolet rays is being uh, bombarded into the water, it will be uh, deflected by the suspended solid. So it won't be able to kill the bacteria because it gets deflected, okay, most of it. And then again, it also will not have some residual in water. But when we talk about chlorination, this is the most common application uh, uh, for disinfections. And it, can, it is available in granular form, powdered form, liquid form, and gaseous form as well. And the good thing about chlorine is, once you add chlorine in water, it will be able to have some residual present in the water so that it can protect the water along the piping line. But the negative effect of it, should there is an organic matter in the water, okay, that organic may be able to react with chlorine and form trihalomethanes. And it is believed that trihalomethanes is carcinogenic or can cause cancer. Uh, to show you with the uh, chlorine building, so this is the chlorine building. Okay, they have an alarm system. And the alarm system is basically uh, it's a device, okay, uh, to detect uh, chlorine leakage, okay, basically uh, chlorine detector. You, you must have chlorine detector in the chlorine building. So then, if there is any uh, leakage, 
So we have to evacuate the building. Okay. There was a chlorine leakage happened at a water treatment plant in, in the United States, okay, in 2019, I think. I believe it was in Alabama. Uh, because of the mistakenly, accidentally add uh, sodium hypochlorite, if I'm not mistaken, with ferrex chloride or something, okay? So be, um, the reaction of that producing chlorine, uh, chlorine gas, and it's being inhaled by the uh, workers over there, and about 50 of them was hospitalized because of the because they actually smell those chlorine gases. It's like smelling Clorox. Clorox, it's a, it's a bleaching, a bleaching uh, chemicals. Okay? It, it, it can cause you nausea or even uh, headaches okay? and uh, respiratory problems as well. So this is uh, water without chlorine or before chlorine. And this is water after chlorination. You can see that uh, the water after chlorination is clearer compared to the water before chlorination. Okay, we have a bigger size of chlorine tank. And this chlorine tank, the weight of the chlorine uh, tank or the chlorine inside this tank is nearly a ton or nearly 1,000 kilograms. So this chlorine okay, can be used up to 12 days if the water treatment, pl water treatment plant is treating about 36,000 uh, million liter per day of water. And we have also the smaller size of our chlorine tank, like that. Okay, chlorine cylinders. And I think we have to go to the chemistry part of the chlorines.